Dwayne Allen is a rising NFL talent, a tight end who's able to keep up with the challenges of playing in one of the league's elite offenses. For the Indianapolis Colts, uh, the tight end position needs to know everything the wide receivers know, everything the running backs know, everything the offensive line know. It, it's good having that type of responsibility, but it is tough. While the Colts' success has raised Dwayne's visibility, Pro Bowl quarterback Andrew Luck has helped accelerate his improvement. Every year, Andrew is getting better and better. And so with that, the people around him need to grow with him. It's kind of a consensus that this is the year. The front office has done a great job of going out and getting players to help us win. And the core, the nucleus that we already have in place are experienced and no longer a young team. We're expected to be the best. Along the way, Dwayne has become one of Indy's favorite sons. Indianapolis is home, Indiana is home. I and mean, it was like that since I got here in 2012. The, the people really embraced me. They say that Hoosier hospitality is second only to Southern hospitality. It just so happens I'm a Southern boy. As a boy, Dwayne was abandoned by his dad. I didn't have a physical father <clears throat> in the household growing up, a single parent home, uh, youngest of seven, uh, low income, government, um, housing some and funding, uh, countless experiences uh, that I probably shouldn't have at the age that I had them. Experiences that now motivate Duane to walk alongside inner city youths in Indianapolis. As the Colts player executive for Dream Alive, he actively participates in programs that provide mentoring and community service for young people. Being a blessing to others. You know, it's only halfway fulfilled whenever you receive. We're, we're all meant to, to give. Whatever it is uh, that we have, whether it be our talents, uh, resources, I'm called to give. You know, I pray about the different opportunities that come my way. And whenever I uh, feel as though the Lord is moving me in a direction, I go. I don't hesitate. The need that you most identify with when you were their age. Uh, I see a lot of myself in them. So I understand their, their, what they're going through. Uh, having someone to look up to and you, you grow up learning um, on your own trial and error, you can only learn so much about the world if you stay inside a four block bubble. But once you start breaking out of that bubble, you, you're able to dream bigger. What is the message you convey to them? Love, love. That's the one thing that I want them to get from an interaction with me. Not that you know, they're hanging out with the starting tight end of the Indianapolis Colts or any of that. What I want most is for them to know that they're loved, they're cherished, they are worth it. Because when I was their age, that's all I wanted. Someone that really, really loved me. That yearning for love often led to trouble. Anger has always been an issue. I went to the alternative school for three consecutive years, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade because of anger, because of attitude. And here I am with a fresh start at a high school and I'm already two weeks into school, one right up away from getting sent to an alternative school again. As a six foot three freshman, he was recruited to play football by his high school coach. Anger found an outlet when aggression took the field, bringing enough achievement to earn him a scholarship to Clemson. It continued to follow me through college. Um, I had to fall in line and submit that word submit doesn't, doesn't, doesn't go well in my profession, doesn't go well in my sport. No, no man want to submit. And you're drafted later than you thought you would be. You just come into the league with such a chip on your shoulder. The anger carried him through his first season with the Colts. A hip injury in the opening game ended his second season. Dwayne's growing rage resulted in a sense of helplessness. How did you confront it? My anger didn't get resolved until there was a change of heart. No man can change heart. But Dwayne learned Jesus Christ could. He was encouraged by Christian teammates that provided him with devotional reading. He reached into my heart and unshackled me from my sin. He reached into my mind and said, Dwayne, in order for me to take you where I'm gonna, where I'm gonna take you, you're gonna have to think a little differently. There was just a, a sense of forgiveness and grace. In January of 2014, Dwayne exchanged anger for an undying love. He said, Dwayne, enough. I am real. I am here. And I love you. If you tap into something that is everlasting, 
that is a river that will never run dry, that flows on and on and on, and you can come back and forth to it whenever you want to be replenished. You'll have fuel forever. The Colts' Dwayne Allen has scored from a setback, catching a transforming love and running with it to help change the lives of others. What does that Heavenly Father look like to you? Someone who loves unconditionally. You know, he's been able to really reveal what that love is like. Following Christ frees you. It's the freedom to do what you ought to do. And with that freedom, I'm able to provide for those who are coming up in the same situation as I am. And I'm thankful for that opportunity to be able to serve where I am in the coach locker room.